Today on Cruise Man's Garage, I'm installing this Pathfinder LED high mount sequential LED brake and running light on my own 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour. This installation requires the Pathfinder LED under seat plug and play harness. Now this harness comes with four connectors. You're only going to use one of them for this installation. They've provided additional connectors for other Pathfinder LED plug and play products. So you only have to purchase the harness once. This installation also requires that you have a Honda luggage rack installed or you could install the luggage rack at the same time as the Pathfinder LED light. Remove the side panels on the left and right hand side of the motorcycle. With the side panels removed, you can now remove the seat and set it off to the side. Use a 12 millimeter socket to remove the two bolts that hold on each of the passenger grab rails. Make sure when you remove the bolts that you're holding the grab rail so that it doesn't fall and hit your saddlebag. Now we're ready to remove the passenger backrest. On the inside of the trunk lid, you'll see six screws, three on each side, that hold the passenger backrest in place. We need to remove all six of these screws. Note that these six screws are the longer 5x16 screws. There's a single 5x12 screw on each passenger armrest shown here. We need to remove those screws. Here you can see the difference in the size of the screws. With the screws removed, the passenger backrest will come loose, but there is an electrical connector that must be released before we can remove the backrest. Press this tab here to release the connector. Locate the three body clips on the right side of the trunk floor and remove these by pressing down in the center of the clip and then pulling up with your fingernail. You'll notice the one toward the front is longer than the other two. Now remove the three Phillips screws on the right hand side of the inner trunk liner. You'll find two more Phillips screws underneath the trunk hinge area as shown. Now you should be able to carefully remove the right hand side trunk panel. You'll have to work it around that hinge and just carefully remove it as shown. On the left side trunk hinge, you'll notice a wire harness is connected with a clip. We need to remove that and also remove this clip so that the harness can be pulled free from the trunk lid. There are six 5 mm socket bolts that hold the trunk lid to the hinge. These must all be removed. Using a 5 mm Allen wrench, remove these bolts. It's a good idea to leave one bolt on the first side that you remove to hold the trunk lid in place if you're doing this by yourself. So that you can hold on to the trunk lid as you remove the last two bolts. To protect the painted surface of your trunk lid, use a soft surface like a towel like I'm using here. I also have a small piece of 2x4 wrapped with a microfiber cloth so that you can keep these little tabs off of the surface. You don't want these to break off. The inner trunk liner is held in place with these seven Phillips screws as well as four screws that hold the trunk striker rods in place. All of these must be removed before we can remove the inner liner. Go ahead and remove all of these screws. Take note when you remove the striker rods, the angle at which the striker rods must be placed when they are reinstalled. The inner liner can be removed by starting to release the tabs from the front of the trunk and move your way toward the rear of the trunk liner. Using some isopropyl alcohol on a rag, we're going to clean the surface area shown of the 
inner liner of the trunk because we're getting ready to attach some tape and we want to make sure it's free of oil and fingerprints and dirt and I'm just tearing off a few strips of gaffer tape uh, to use for this installation. Now if you're installing the Pathfinder sub harness you place it as shown here and just attach the gaffer tape to hold the cable in place. Make a 90 degree bend in the places shown and then use a little more gaffer tape to hold it in place. Now you can use as much gaffer tape as you like here. Uh, in fact, probably wouldn't hurt to use a couple of strips in each space just to hold it better. However, you may also be installing the Pathfinder trunk sub harness along with a Honda sub harness. Let's say you want the little LED interior trunk light. You can do that. They'll install next to each other. However, you may want to even remove the wires from the Honda harness that you're not going to be using because you're not going to be using the two wires for the uh, Honda trunk light. So they will attach right next to each other. You basically use the gaffer tape the same way. You're just basically attaching both harnesses right next to each other and route them the same way. Install the metal nut clips that come in the kit onto the posts that are at the rear of the mounting base as shown. They just slip right over those posts. Now we're ready to mount the multifunction LED brake light into the base. Begin by routing the wire through the opening in the back of the base and then clip the light into place and once you have the mounting tabs firmly secured against those little nut clips you can now use two of the screws that come in the kit to attach the light to the base. Next, we need to route the wire harness through the hole at the very center back of the base as shown. Pull the harness through and then we'll want to pull that rubber grommet through as well. It may take a little bit of effort to get that uh, rubber grommet all the way through that hole, uh, but it will go through. And this is what it should look like once you have it pulled through correctly. If you already have a luggage rack installed, you need to remove it before you install the multifunction LED light. Now, some trunk lids from Honda actually have a mark where this red circle is, and that's where you're going to drill the hole for your trunk light. However, my trunk lid did not have that mark, so in that case, you will have to measure the distance between the two luggage rack mounting holes as shown. To get an accurate measurement, I'm using a flexible fabric measuring tape, like what a tailor or a seamstress would use. Now I've taped down one end right in the center of that marker where you would drill for your luggage rack installation. By taping down this measuring tape, making a direct line from left to right to the next luggage rack mounting hole, I can see that the distance between the center points of those two mounting holes is 178 millimeters. We want our hole directly in the middle, so I'm making a mark at 89 millimeters, and that's where I'm going to drill my hole. First, I'm going to drill a small pilot hole right on that mark. Now, I've got my trunk lid positioned off the edge of the table so that if the drill bit goes through, it won't go down into my table. But you want to drill a small pilot hole first, and then we'll use that to guide our other bit to get the 10 millimeter hole. Now here I'm using a step bit to drill my 10 millimeter hole. This particular bit goes from like 6 millimeters all the way up to 12. Uh, you don't have to use a step bit. I just think it does a really, really good job on plastic. And periodically uh, you want to just take your time and clear away the shavings that it creates. And I like to stop every now and then and measure. I want to measure that hole to see once I get to 10 millimeters. I'm not going to trust the drill bit. I want to make sure my hole is 10 millimeters. Next, we want to route those two connectors on the trunk light 
up through the hole we just drilled and into the underside of the trunk lid. We're also going to pull that grommet through, or at least half the grommet, so that it comes through that hole that we just drilled as well. And of course, getting the grommet through that hole, it can be a challenge. You kind of have to push from the bottom and pull a little bit from the top. Just don't pull too hard. You could also use a little bit of dishwashing liquid here. Uh, it will help it slip through that opening a little bit better. But once the grommet is successfully pulled through, this is what it should look like. And if you look at it from the top of the trunk lid, you'll see how it looks on top as well. A little more isopropyl alcohol on a rag and we're going to clean this area because we're going to use some more gaffer tape to tape down our connector to the underside of the trunk lid. Before we reinstall the inner trunk liner and the luggage rack, I think it's a good idea to put down some masking tape underneath this trunk light. You may be applying some pressure uh, to the underside of the trunk lid to get it to go back together and you don't want that light to scratch your paint. Before I install the liner back onto the trunk lid, I like to go ahead and connect the wires from the light to the sub harness. It should look like this here. You want to make sure you connect the correct colored wires to the correct ones on the harness. To reinstall the inner liner, start at an angle and start toward the back. You want to make sure you get those back uh, little bosses that go through the screw holes in place. Make sure those little bosses are flush with the screw holes as shown here, and then you know you have it snapped into place correctly. Reinstall the striker rods with the angle facing toward the back of the trunk, and then reinstall the screws that hold the striker rods in place. Once you have the striker rods reinstalled, you can reinstall the seven screws that hold the inner trunk liner in place. Now you're ready to install or reinstall your luggage rack, making sure that the two posts at the very rear go down through the holes in the high mount LED light. Use the remaining four screws that come in your light kit to attach the light to the underside of the luggage rack as shown. There are four screws and four posts that you mount into. Installing the rubber pads on the luggage rack will hide the mounting screws. Now reinstall the trunk lid on the hinges on the motorcycle. Now here's something that I did. There was one of these little connectors on the Honda harness from the factory, but since I'm adding the Pathfinder LED uh, harness, I'm, I cut the one off from Honda and I'm using one of the ones from Pathfinder LED and I'm wrapping it around both of these harnesses, the Honda harness and the Pathfinder LED. And then once I get that uh, around there, then I will clip that into uh, this little holder right here. If you're installing the Honda harness along with the Pathfinder LED, you can use the push mount tie clip that's already on the Honda harness and then just cable tie the Pathfinder to that harness. Uh, or if you're only installing the Pathfinder, use one of the push mount tie clips that comes in the kit. Okay, so I'm going to do another little cable tie right here to keep this again right in line with that uh, Honda harness that I have. If you don't have the Honda harness, you don't have to worry about it. You just want to follow this same line. And then we want to come underneath the speaker, underneath the speaker, underneath between the bottom of the speaker and that little saddlebag. And now it will be underneath the seat where we can connect to our other harness. Clean the right speaker enclosure using isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so since I had the Honda harness and I had their little foam pad, I'm just going to go ahead and stick the, uh, uh, the uh, Pathfinder LED harness along with it. Uh, 
to this little speaker housing. Now you could also use gaffer tape. If you, if you don't have the Honda harness, uh, just use some gaffer tape to tie down the, uh, the one from Pathfinder LED to the side of this speaker. Here are the wires for the Pathfinder LED. You can see the little ends on them. I'm going to run these wires underneath. You see how this wire from Honda comes over here and underneath this big harness? I'm going to do the same with this. I'm going to run it underneath that large uh, bundle of wire there that goes into your audio system. I'm going to run it underneath there. And now I'm going to run these underneath this round frame rail right here. There's another bundle here. I want to run it underneath that. Because what we want to make sure is we want to make sure when we put the seat back on, none of our wires get crimped by the seat itself, or the seat pan, I should say. Locate the saddlebag connectors underneath the seat. Okay, this is the right side saddlebag connector that's under the seat. And I'm going to show you how to disconnect this. It works the exact same way on the left side. So basically, you're going to press down on this tab right here. And when you press down on that tab, you want to pull back like that. You see how that comes apart? The Pathfinder LED harness, the one with the yellow wire. Look for the one that has the yellow wire right here. See that? That goes on the right side of the motorcycle. So this is basically going to connect right in line where we disconnected this. It'll only go in one way. We're going to connect right here. And this piece will connect to the other half, like this. So now it's connected right in line, and we're going to route those underneath the frame rail, just like we did our wires from the light. Maybe easier to do these one at a time. Because there's actually four connectors on this harness, and we're only going to use one. They're providing you with additional connectors for future uh, products that they come out with. And we'll slip that under there. So now we've disconnected the left side connector and we're going to attach it the exact same way, just like we did the other one. We're going to put this here. The only place it will go in. This one actually slipped off the little stay. I'm going to put that back. And then this will go in like that. Okay? Now we have these connectors. Now don't worry about these wires. These are for some other aftermarket products I have installed. You don't need to be concerned about those, but I'm going to stick these under the frame rail here as well as as well as these right here. Okay? Now I'm, I made the same mistake again. I'm going to stick them underneath this big bundle here, and you might have to kind of push them under there one at a time because it's, it's a tight fit, but it's better that it be underneath this uh, than on top of it to get it out like that, and then I'm going to put that underneath the frame rail. So there's our four wires, or four connectors. Now we're ready to connect our multifunction light to the harness that went under the trunk. You want to make sure you're connecting the one with the yellow wire. Should it be the shorter of the two? Let's just plug it into one of them. Like that. And now we're going to check. And we can kind of tuck all these other connectors and all these wires down in between here. And this other wire, this is the longer one from coming from the light. And that's going to plug into one of these on the other side. Okay, now we can test our lights to see if they work. Okay, so let's turn on the bike. So we have a running light that works. Let's check our turn signals. This is the right turn signal. This is the left turn signal. And let's test our brakes. 
Once you've confirmed the lights are working, we just need to reinstall the passenger backrest, the right trunk side panel, the right passenger grab rail, the seat, and the side panels. To be perfectly honest, I really didn't want to add a luggage rack to my 2018 Goldwing, but when I saw the Pathfinder LED multifunction light that mounts under the luggage rack with the sequential turn signals and the running light and the modulated brake light, I knew I was going to have to have it. I consider it to be one of the most important safety things you can add to a 2018 plus Honda Goldwing. 